And we're live in five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Matias Costa. I'm a Cerebro Vascular Fellow here at Swedish uh, in Seattle, Washington. I want to thank Seattle Science Foundation and Swedish for helping us putting this together. Today we have a very special guest again, Professor Pierrot is professor of radiology in the Faculty of Medicine of Reims in France and the head of the Department of Neuroradiology in the University Hospital in Reims since 2001. He was trained in neuroradiology in La Salpetriere and in Foundation Rothschild under Professor Moret in Paris. His clinical and academic activities are focused on evaluation of therapies for aneurysms, stroke, brain and spine vascular malformations, among other pathologies. He is or was principal investigator for several multi-center French trials such as Athena, Clarity, Arita, Web French Observatory, and let me know if I forgot one of them, and European trials such as Bravo, Webcast, Webcast 2, and has published more than 150 papers. He's been senior editor and reviewer of many journals, international journals. So welcome, Professor Pierrot. Thanks for being with us again. We're going to speak a we're going to have the second part of his talk about web, which is going to be about results of prospective studies. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, again for being here and you can share your screen. Thank you, uh, Matthias, uh, for the very kind introduction. So I will uh, share my presentation with you. And uh, so I, I, as you say, I will uh, discuss, uh, sorry. I will discuss the results of the European studies and the US, the results of the prospective studies, US and the European studies. Uh, indeed, uh, I can also answer to question during my presentation if you have some uh, burning question. And also I can uh, answer some questions regarding the first part of my talk. I remember that it was a long talk. Today it will be shorter. And if you have question regarding also technical points uh, regarding the use of the web device, I can answer uh, th this kind of question. So, uh, there are my disclosures. Uh, uh, you know, the important thing with the web device is that it was uh, relatively well evaluated from the beginning of the clinical practice. Uh, web uh, device was introduced in Europe in uh, 2011. Uh, I was treating the first case in my department in June uh, 2011, and from the beginning, or maybe not exactly 2011, but at least 2012, there was a clinical evaluation conducted uh, through uh, several uh, prospective uh, single arm studies in uh, Europe and France. So you see here the so, uh, technical evolution of the device moving from, uh, at the beginning, a dual layer device with two cages, so one in the other, uh, but rapidly we had the development of a single layer device. The limitation of the dual layer device was that it was relatively rigid, so relatively difficult to navigate. The reason why Sequent, at the time, the company Sequent was developing a single layer device uh, by changing the braiding of the device, making making it uh, more, uh, more strong and more supportive for the uh, cure of the aneurysm. So we had uh, at that time two shapes, uh, single layer, uh, SL, sorry, uh, which is uh, uh, this one uh, on the uh, SLS, which is a spherical uh, shape, which is more dedicated for uh, relatively narrow neck aneurysm compared to the SL, which is more for very wide neck uh, aneurysm. The next technical development was the uh, EV uh, enhanced visualization uh, version. Uh, at the beginning, you know, the visualization of the device were just by the two markers you have at the uh, distal uh, part of the device and at the proximal part. But uh, with the SL, SLS EV are made with uh, DFT, uh, platinum inside the nitinol, 
and it makes a full cage uh, visible, which is indeed for the deployment of the cage, the placement of the cage in the aneurysm sac more easy. Uh, thereafter, we had the next development, which was the 21 system for the devices from uh, 3 to uh, 7 millimeter in, uh, in uh, width. And thereafter, we had the last development, which was the 17 system. Uh, and in parallel to that, you see that we have an, uh, uh, an evaluation uh, with several studies uh, of the device, uh, several studies evaluating the device. So at the beginning, webcast, the first studies conducted in Europe, was evaluating the dual, dual layer uh, device. There, thereafter, there was the French observatory, which was mixing dual layer on SL, SLS. And after the uh, appearance of the EV version, the next study was webcast 2 with similar designs compared to webcast. And in parallel to that, we have in the US all these studies, webcast, webcast 2, French subsidiary, we are European study, multi-center indeed. And uh, in parallel to that, we had web IT conducted in the US by uh, Dave and uh, Dave Fiorella and uh, Adam Arthur, uh, uh, conducted with uh, SL, SLS, EV. There was another series uh, later on, which is uh, Claris. Claris was dedicated to ruptured aneurysm for a, a simple reason, which is that there was a, a very limited number of ruptured aneurysm included in the webcast, French Observatory, webcast to WebIT. The, the rate of uh, ruptured aneurysm in these studies were roughly around 10%, which is uh, relatively low. The reason was why a, a series dedicated to ruptured aneurysm was conducted by Laurence Pell from uh, Paris. Uh, and this study uh, is now, the recruitment is completed and results were published. At least the uh, one month safety and one month efficacy was already published and the, the one year follow-up uh, will be published very soon. The paper has been accepted in uh, in Schnees and will be published soon. And finally, we have a last study, which is a clever study. Clever study was dedicated, is dedicated, sorry, to the evaluation of the uh, Web uh, 17 system. Uh, the recruitment is now completed and we will have uh, the results in the next few months. So, I, here you see uh, more or less uh, the same information. You, we have more information, more detailed information. You see the number of patients included. You see in webcast 51, in webcast 2, 55, in French observatories, 62 patients, in WebIT, 150, in Claris, uh, uh, 60 patients, and finally in uh, in. Uh, in the clever, the number of patients expected was 150 or so. So for all the study, you know, the, the inclusion criteria were, we are mostly the same, widening bifurcation aneurysm, ruptured and unruptured, except for Claris, where it was exclusively ruptured aneurysm on the typical location for web aneurysm treatment, FCA, ACOM, basilar artery, ICA terminus. It's true for webcast, webcast 2, French observatory, web IT, and Claris indeed, and Clever also. Uh, you see that, uh, as I mentioned before, in webcast, only WebDL was used. Uh, in webcast 2, web SL, SLS. In uh, French Observatory, WebDL and web SL, SLS. Uh, in WebIT, web SL, SLS, EV. And uh, in uh, Claris, web SL, SLS, also EV. And in Clever, the web 17 system. So the follow-up uh, was for all uh, studies, uh, all European studies on the web IT, but not in French Observatory, five years follow-up. Uh, we will publish soon also the five-year follow-up of, uh, of uh, the European uh, studies, the cumulated population of the three uh, series. 
it's uh, already accepted in Genes also, but uh, not published uh, even online as of now. It's uh, we we are waiting for the proof. And uh, uh, WebIT also uh, five years follow up is available. I don't know if it's I don't think it's published now, but it will be published soon. Uh, so we we have all this information, and I will share all this information with you regarding uh, safety and efficacy of the web. So European ser uh, series, uh, webcast, webcast two, French observatories, they were all single arm pros prospective multi-center conducted in Europe or France for French observatory. All data collected are 100% monitored. All adverse events were independently evaluated by uh, Andy Molideux. It's true also for WebIT, by the way, it was the same uh, CEC and the same core lab. The anatomical results were independently evaluated by James Byrne. So for French observatory, observatory clinical and imaging follow-up was collected yearly up to two years. And uh, for webcast and webcast two and web IT also, clinical and imaging follow-up was collected yearly up to five years for uh, webcast, webcast two and web IT. Uh, so we were publishing uh, two years follow-up, three years follow-up, not four years follow-up because it was not mandatory. And we were also publishing five years, as I say, I just say, we will publish soon uh, five years follow-up. So here you see the population we were analyzing, uh, in fact, uh, the the accumulated population of the, of the three European series, webcast, webcast two, French observatory. So uh, the number of patients was uh, 168. You see nothing special regarding uh, uh, the population. You know, mean age was 55. Uh, gender there was uh, uh, female dominance as usual, 66.7% of cases. What is interesting to look here is that uh, we had wide neck and reserve in uh, this uh, accumulated population in 85% of cases with a neck greater or equal to four millimeter. And you see that dom width was, the mean was 7.6. Uh, the range was 2.8 to 17 millimeters. So you can ask me why uh, 17 millimeter aneurysm was treated. In fact, it was a giant partially thrombosed aneurysm. There were just one huh? treated with uh, the web system. Uh, and by the way, you know, the experience we have, uh, not only in this series, but in general, is that, uh, you know, when you treat an aneurysm with uh, a giant aneurysm, a large or giant aneurysm partially thrombosed with the web, you have the same risk as with coils, which is to have the migration of the web in the clot. And I think in, the, in that case, in the case of this aneurysm, uh, 17 millimeter aneurysm, I think there was a migration of the web. So uh, I don't recommend to treat uh, a large or giant partially thrombosed aneurysm with the web because we have a risk of migration in the, in the clot. So you see here the location. You see that the, the Greek majority were, were uh, MC aneurysm, 51%. Uh, followed by echo mannerism, 21% on basilar uh, 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 aneurysm in 18% uh, of cases. We have relatively few number of uh, uh, IC terminus, 10%, uh, because it's a relatively rare location. We will see uh, a little bit later that the population in web IT was a little bit different with less MCA, which is not really a surprise because you know, in Europe, the, the rate of uh, MC aneurysm treated uh, surgically are rel is relatively low, whereas it's, there is still a, a surgical option in the uh, US. And you see here the, the, the percentage of ruptured aneurysm was a low 8%. So, when we look at the safety in this accumulated population of the European study, at one month, you see that we had some uh, hemorrhagic events. We had three hemorrhagic events out of 167 patients, 1.8% of uh, hemorrhagic events. There was one probable rupture 
procedural rupture of ecomanorism. In fact, there was no, in that case, it was in my department, the case in my department, there was no extravasation of contrast, but you know, the, the distal marker of the web was outside the limits of the aneurysm sac. The reason why we were considering that there were probably a rupture, uh, even if there was no clinical modification and no extravasation. There was one uh, per procedural rupture with uh, extravasation of contrast, and there was one intracranial hemorrhage two days after the procedure, which was considered uh, as uh, being due to uh, antiplatelet treatment. So, but as you see, there were these three events, but without any clinical worsening. There were tumoromobolic uh, events. Uh, all per procedure or within one week after the procedure. So the rate is relatively high, 14%, but relatively similar to what we have in the coiling procedure. Uh, but you see that the, the, the number of patients with a permanent deficit was low, five patients, 3% of the population. Now, when we look at the morbidity and mortality at one month, you see that we had no mortality uh, at one month, 0%, and morbidity was 3%. This morbidity, the five patients had morbidity, there were two thromboembolic events. One patient with a ruptured aneurysm was MRS3 at one month. One patient with an unruptured aneurysm was MRS3 at one month. Uh, there were two patients with uh, ruptured aneurysm, uh, which has uh, which has a morbidity with MRS three uh, or four at uh, one month. And finally, there was a progressive brainstem compression uh, by a giant basilar aneurysm, which was uh, MRS three at one month. And probably it was not. It is a partially thrombosed aneurysm. I mentioned before. It was probably not a good indication. There was. At the beginning, before the treatment, the patient was uh, MRS zero. You, there was a worsening of the clinical situation of, after web aneurysm treatment, and you will see at one year, the patient died finally. So I think it was not a good indication for web, but still it, need, it is part of the study. And I think it's, a, it's an important information for us to know that uh, treating this kind of aneurysm with web is probably not a very good indication. So now when we look at the morbidity, mortality at one year, you see that we have five deaths. One death uh, was due to the consequences and complication of a retroperitoneal hematoma. It was procedure related. So when one death due to the compression of the cerebral uh, brainstem to the, uh, of the brainstem by a giant aneurysm of the basilar artery. And there were three days unrelated to uh, the aneurysm of this, its treatment, one death due to cirrhosis and two deaths due to cancer. Regarding morbidity, there were 1.3% morbidity. One patient had an ischemic stroke post-procedure. It was procedure related and MRS, it was a patient was MRS3 at one year, at one month, or at one year, sorry. And one patient was not from MRS2 to MRS3. Uh, there was a arterial branch thrombosis during retreatment with a flow diverter. So it was not uh, related to the initial procedure, but to the retreatment. Now, when we look at the mortality at five years, so as you know, there were, at one month there was no death, at uh, one year there were three deaths, retroperitoneal hematoma, skin cancer, lung cancer. At one year there were, uh, at, between one year and two years, there were uh, one death, lung cancer. Between two years and three years, there were two deaths. Uh, one due to pneumonia, one due to cancer, and uh, between three years and four years, there were one death due to respiratory failure. Uh, between four years and five years, there were no deaths. So finally, the death at five years was uh, 7%. So the numbers are a little bit different compared to one year because you see that now mortality is evaluated not in the global population of the three studies, but only in webcast and webcast two, because uh, French Observatory has no five years follow-up. So when we look at the procedure-related mortality, it is one patient, 
Uh, it was a retroperitoneal hematoma, in fact, that was uh, responsible for the death. And uh, rape-related mortality is 0%. Now, when we look at the morbidity at five years in the cumulated population of webcast and webcast 2, at one month, there was one patient that with a thromboembolic event. These patients died between one year and two years. Between one, one month and two years, there, were, uh, there was no morbidity. And between two years and five years, there was only one patient, but it was not related to the aneurysm or the his treatment, but to alcoholic neuropathy. So finally, the morbidity at, uh, at uh, five years is uh, one person, one patient out of uh, 100. So uh, here, uh, procedure-related morbidity Morbidity is not one, but is zero, uh, zero, yes. And web-related morbidity is also zero. Now, when we look at web IT, uh, what is very interesting uh, is that the uh, results in web IT are absolutely similar to what we have in the European studies, despite the fact that the population is a little bit different. So you see here the population of web, web IT, uh, age uh, is more or less the same. Again, uh, more females than males, which is quite usual. Uh, you see that the mean uh, transverse, uh, the mean uh, neck size was uh, 4.8. So again, a large population with uh, a wide neck aneurysm. And the mean width was a little bit smaller compared to European study, uh, 6.4. Now, when we look at the location, as I said before, it's uh, different. You see that we have more MCA aneurysm, 30%, uh, uh, ECOM aneurysm in 26.7% of cases, and we have more basilar tip aneurysm, 39% of cases, and relatively few ICA terminus, 4%. Again, a low rate of ruptured aneurysm, 6%, similar to what we have in uh, uh, European studies. So when we look now at uh, morbi mortality at one year, at uh, one month, sorry, you see that all cause morbidity at 30 days is 0.7%. Uh, it was uh, related to a, a rupture and uh, to a subarachnoid hemorrhage. And you see that the MRS was four and the all, uh, all cause mortality at 30 days was again 0%. So you see that we have very similar results in terms of morbid mortality at one year. Uh, on even the morbidity is lower in uh, US studies uh, in the in, uh, web IT compared to European studies. Now we have also the result of Clarice. So uh, uh, there, was, there were uh, 60 patients. You see that mean age is uh, quite similar. Again, uh, uh, more females than male. Uh, again, large uh, uh, wide neck uh, aneurysm. You see that the mean size of the neck is 4.6, and uh, the dome width the mean is 6.6. Uh, the location of uh, aneurysm are, is relatively different compared to uh, the European series and the web IT. Uh, you see that the first location is ECOM. It's not a surprise because it's a more frequent loca uh, location for a rupture. So 46% of aneurysm, followed by MCA, 38%, followed by basilar tip aneurysm, 11%, 12%, and IC terminus are relatively rare, 3.4% of cases. So now when we look at more B mortality at one month, uh, morbidity is indeed higher uh, compared to other theory, but uh, it, we are dealing with uh, rupture aneurysm. You see that the rate of morbidity is 15%, and uh, the rate of mortality is 1.7%. And you see that uh, morbidity on mortality was exclusively related to uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. What is important is that no aneurysm bleeding was observed at one month. And I can do on also at one year, by the way, we, we have now the information of the one year follow up. And we know that there was no aneurysm rebuilding after one month and after one year also. At one year, 
uh, you see morbidity is 9.6%. You, you see the follow-up, we, we have it in uh, only 52 per, uh, patients, but uh, still to see that morbidity is 9.6%, mortality is 3.8%, Again, morbidity and mortality is exclusively related to subarachnoid hemorrhage, and there was no aneurysm rebleeding uh, between one month and one year. Now, in terms of efficacy, what are the results? So, European series, webcast, webcast to uh, uh, French Observatory, we have the anatomical results at one year. You see that we have a complete aneurysm occlusion in 53% of cases, neck remnant in 26% of cases, and uh, aneurysm remnant in 21% of cases. You see here the techniques we were using for the evaluation, mostly DSA, which will be not, uh, which will be different at five years. Indeed, at five years, most, most follow-ups will be obtained from uh, MRA and CTA. So what is interesting is we have a, a, a good rate of uh, complete aneurysm occlusion, 53% of cases. And when we look, look at, at uh, adequate occlusion, we have a rate which is 79% of cases. Where adequate occlusion is uh, uh, aneurysm, uh, complete occlusion on neck remnant. I know that uh, this wording of adequate occlusion is uh, criticized by uh, some uh, physicians, and we can discuss that later on. But still, I think that when we have a neck remnant, singularly if it's stable, and in most cases, singularly with web, it's stable, uh, it's a good result. And we don't need to do a retreatment, which is the reason why we can call it, in my mind, uh, uh, adequate occlusion. But OK, we can discuss that uh, after the, my presentation. Uh, at five years, uh, we have the results only for webcast and webcast two, and we see that we have uh, exactly the same uh, proportion of patients with complete occlusion, 52% more or less, and uh, neck remnant in 26% of cases, which conduct to an adequate occlusion of 78% uh, of cases. So. Uh, these results are quite similar to what we have at uh, one year, which shows that the treatment is uh, quite uh, stable. Now, when we look at the uh, web IT, you see that we have exactly the same results as in uh, the European series, complete occlusion in 54% of cases, the neck remnant 31% of cases, and uh, uh, comp uh, uh, aneurysm remnant, sorry, 15% of cases. So we have a rate of uh, adequate occlusion in 84% uh, of cases, which is uh, good results. I don't have, by the way, the results at five years. I think they will be published soon. Now, when we look at the retreatment, uh, you see that uh, at one year, we had a retreatment for uh, three aneurysm. Now I am just uh, looking at webcast and webcast two. We had a 3.2% rate of retreatment at one year. At two years, the rate was higher. It was 8.4%. Uh, at uh, uh, three years, there were no change. There was no retreatment. At uh, four years, there were 10 uh, retreatments so of 10.5%. And finally, at five years, there, was there were 11 retreatments, 11.6%. So here we have the retreatment modality. Uh, we, we can use a lot of modality to retreat an aneurysm in case of uh, recanalization after web aneurysm treatment. We can use uh, stent assisted coiling. It was used in three cases in, the, in this population. Uh, you can use uh, surgery clipping. Uh, it was used in two cases. We will analyze this uh, three cases in my department uh, with a recanalization. Uh, not all of them were part of webcast or webcast food, but we were publishing this uh, short series of free treatment with, coil, uh, with a clip. And you know what is interesting is that my neurosurgeon says that it's more easy to retreat an aneurysm after web aneurysm treatment that, than after coiling, you know, because the web has no radial force, so you can easily 
compress the web with the web, which is not the case with coils. But you know, the, probably you you all have uh, you know that you are more or less uh, all uh, neurosurgeon. I imagine that you have repeated some uh, aneurysm treated initially with coils, and you know that it's difficult sometimes to place the clip at the level of the neck. And even sometimes it's necessary to uh, uh, pull out the coils from the aneurysm sac to be able to place the clip. So the reason why the treatment, uh, the surgical treatment after an initial web aneurysm treatment is easier than after coiling. Uh, in one case, the treatment was uh, only a stent. Uh, uh, there was a retreatment with a web plus stent. I will show you a case, I think. Uh, there was, uh, in one case, retreatment with web. And uh, in two cases, uh, retreatment was done with a flow diverter. I have to confess that in my own practice, when I have a recognition with web, my first option is now very often uh, two flow diverters. Uh, it means that at the beginning of uh, uh, flow diversion area, we were very reluctant to use flow diverter in bifurcation and rhythm. And there were several series that, uh, from uh, different departments reporting the use of flow diverter for the treatment of uh, bifurcation and rhythm with uh, uh, results that were not so good with some complication and also a very slow uh, process of cure. So that was the reason why I was reluctant to use flow diverter at the beginning, but now we have a large experience. We are treating maybe more than 50 or 100 patients with flow diverter for bifurcation and rhythm, wide neck bifurcation and rhythm, and it, it's working very well with a very low rate of complication. So, in my mind, which we have a recognition uh, with a web, uh, our first option for retreatment is uh, now flow diverter. So to show you some uh, illustrative case, cases, uh, it's a wide neck bifurcation aneurysm. You see the so mean width is 4.6. We were using a web uh, DL5 by three. Uh, by the way, at that time, we were probably not aware of the need to use a plus one, minus one rule to select the web device. So the reason why it's uh, the, the web device has a width relatively similar to the mean width of the aneurysm sac. Uh, we were placing the web. You see the web here. It's a DL with uh, three markers. Uh, you see the end of the procedure. We still have some opacification of the aneurysm sac. Now we have the DSA at one year showing a complete aneurysm occlusion. We have MRA at two years showing the same results and MRA at five years showing a, a stable, a complete uh, aneurysm occlusion. Here another example, uh, wide neck uh, ECOM uh, aneurysm. Uh, you see that the mean width is uh, four. Uh, the height is 3.6. We were selecting now a five box by three web SL, it was probably 27 still. Uh, uh, you, we were placing the web, you see the web, we have the one year DSA, you see that we have uh, what we call now web shape modification, with uh, uh, the, the, the height is less at one year compared to uh, immediately post-operative situation, and, uh, but still you see that we have a complete uh, aneurysm occlusion and we have a three-year MRA on a five-year MRA showing both uh, complete, uh, aneurysm, stable complete uh, aneurysm occlusion. Another example here, it's a wide neck uh, MC aneurysm, mean with 6.3, uh, height uh, 5.3. We were selecting according to the plus one rule, a web SL seven by three. Uh, you see the placement of the web. You see at uh, one year, we have a web shape modification, uh, but we still have a good results. Okay, maybe it's a small neck remnant. We can say that, but you see that when we have the, when we look at the follow-up at three year, four year, five year of MRA, you see that we have no uh, recognition of more important thing. Another example here, again, wide neck uh, MC aneurysm, mean with 6.5, uh, height is five. Uh, we were selecting a web SL seven by four. You see the placement of the web, you see the end of the procedure. 
uh, you see uh, one year DSA, we have a small neck remnant. So probably you see it was uh, probably the web was a little bit too small. Uh, uh, that's the reason why we have this part, which is a superior part, a small neck remnant of the superior part of the aneurysm, two-year MRA, three-year MRA, five-year MRA, show the same situation. So it's stable. We were selecting a web. You see, more and more we are oversizing a little bit more. So now we were, despite the mean width of 4.6, we were selecting a 6 by 3 SL. Uh, it is the end of the procedure. Uh, no more uh, opacification of the device and aneurysm sac. It is a one year DSA. You see that we have a complete uh, aneurysm occlusion. Uh, and uh, you see here at uh, two year, five year, we have uh, the occurrence of a very small neck remnant, which is unchanged at five years. So as of now, we continue to follow up the patient, but we are not uh, deciding to do uh, another treatment. So here another example, it's a ruptured basilar aneurysm. It's one of the first cases we have treated uh, in my department. Uh, we were using a web uh, DL at the time. You see the web DL with uh, three markers here. And you see the control angiogram at the end. You see definitely it was, we were doing a mistake, but at that time we were not aware that it was a mistake. We were selecting a too small device so at the beginning uh, of the process, at the end of the procedure, sorry, but uh, from the beginning, we had a neck remnant, and you see that the proximal marker is not in the right position. It is in the aneurysm sac. And as I say, uh, during the first presentation, it has to be in the neck or even in the bifurcation. So uh, what we have seen is this, in July, two, the, the treatment was done in uh, January, 2013, in July, 2013, 13, we have this, okay, uh, neck remnant of, uh, big neck remnant of small aneurysm remnant, but indeed we were continuing to follow up the patient and now we have this aneurysm remnant and in April, 2016, we have this, but you see that it's not easy because it's a very wide neck situation. And you know that the both P1 on both sides are, rel are relatively small. So what we were doing in that case, we were uh, doing a, a retreatment by placing a new, another web at the level of the neck and by placing a stand at the time we were using an enterprise stand uh, in the P1 on the right side on the upper part of the, of the, the basilar artery. On uh, here is the control angiogram uh, a little bit less than one year after the uh, retreatment. And you see that we have still a neck remnant. And we do another control in June 2017, showing the same, uh, the same neck remnant, but stable neck remnant. So we have follow up. I don't have the follow up uh, by MRA. We have the follow up with MRA. And uh, we still have the same uh, neck remnant, but it's uh, quite stable. So in conclusion, you see that we have a very high safety of uh, web aneurysm treatment. We can really say that no mortality uh, at uh, one month in the European GCP on the web IT, uh, small mortality in Claris, but uh, don't forget that Claris uh, is dealing with ruptured aneurysm, uh, very low morbidity in European uh, series, 3% in web IT, 0.7. Uh, relatively higher morbidity in Claris due to the fact that uh, we are dealing with ruptured aneurysm and all, all morbidity and mortality in Claris was related to the subarachnoid hemorrhage. At 12 months, you see that again, we have a low morbidity in European series, a relative low mortality, 3.3% in European series, 0% in web IT. In uh, European series, uh, mortality is mostly related to uh, unrelated disease, cancer or cirrhosis. And in Claris, you see that mortality at one year is 3.8% on mobility is 9.6%. So very high safety of web aneurysm treatment when we compare 
with uh, uh, morbid mortality, even with uh, standard coiling, we see that the results are at least as good as standard coiling or even better because, you know, uh, uh, in recent series, for example, Areta, which is uh, uh, a population of a uh, more or less 800 patients treated in France with coils, the, the mortality is not zero at one month. Huh? The mortality is higher, is roughly 1%, but it's higher in the coiling group. There is also a great efficacy of webinarism treatment, also in long-term follow-up. Uh, I just report here, here 12 months follow-up, but you see that we have uh, similar results between WebIT and European uh, series, 54 or 53% of cases with complete aneurysm occlusion, and uh, also a high rate of adequate occlusion, 79 on 80, 84% of cases. And in Clarice, results are different, but results are different uh, because we are dealing with ruptured aneurysm. You see that the rate of complete aneurysm occlusion is less, probably. So I was discussing with Lawrence Pell with the PI. So uh, one important reason is probably uh, physicians were a little bit less aggressive with ruptured aneurysm. So, you know, the, the oversizing was probably a little bit less uh, in Claris than in uh, uh, other series. And uh, you see that, uh, by the way, when we look at adequate occlusion, we still have a relatively uh, high rate of adequate occlusion in Clarice at one year, 87% of cases. So again, a relatively good efficacy of the treatment in this uh, group of patients. So uh, here are the results. Uh, here is a, a list of publication. Uh, we are, there are a lot of publications now regarding web, uh, also with uh, retrospective series. Thank you for your attention, and I am ready to answer your question regarding this part of the presentation, or also the first part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. It was amazing. Really nice talk, useful for us. Can you, uh, you can stop sharing your screen if you want. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Pro, that was a, a great talk, and thanks again for uh, for joining us at SSF. Uh, and thank you once again for uh, proctoring me on the web. Uh, I couldn't have learned from a more experienced um, a practitioner. Um, one question I had: this this is a kind of a, a tour de force of uh, all of the uh, papers on web. Um, there's been some literature that's come out recently comparing clipping of middle cerebral artery aneurysms versus uh, web, uh, with the occlusion rates obviously being close to 100% for uh, clipping um, and uh, uh, adequate occlusion of around 85%, as you've um, I just presented. Um, and the uh, traditional clippers are uh, quite critical of. Uh, uh, of web in that regard. Uh, we still do both uh, uh, web and clipping for middle cerebral artery aneurysms, but how do you respond to the traditionalists, at least in the US where we still clip aneurysms? Um, you know, there is some data there that shows that the occlusion rate with clipping is superior. Yeah, no, you know, I, I, uh, I think, uh, MC aneurysm are probably the more difficult aneurysm to treat with web uh, because it's, uh, it's uh, at the level of a relatively complex bifurcation or sometimes trifurcation, by the way. So uh, I agree that uh, MC aneurysm are probably the more difficult aneurysm to treat with web. Uh, the reason why sometimes now we are singularly for unruptured aneurysm using uh, flow diverter also for, to treat uh, web uh, uh, MC aneurysm. So uh, in, this, uh, in the same time, I agree that we have better results with clipping uh, in terms of uh, uh, aneurysm occlusion and probably a higher rate of uh, complete aneurysm occlusion. But in the same time, 
uh, really complete aneurysm occlusion, I think a neck remnant is also acceptable. Uh, you know, neck remnant, when you look at the literature, uh, when you look at Karat, when you look at a lot of studies, you, it's relative, it's very rare that you have a rebleeding coming from a neck remnant. From an aneurysm remnant, yes, you can have a rebleeding, but from a neck remnant, it was clearly demonstrated from Karat, but from other studies. And when you look at the literature, when you search for rebleeding of neck remnant in the literature, it's not so frequent. So, okay, so I think adequate occlusion for me is, is, uh, is, is, uh, is, is okay. Uh, so it means that uh, we have a, a rate of adequate occlusion, which is uh, more or less 80 percent, let's say. So I agree that it's still less than clipping. So maybe uh, in some situation, we still agree to, to have some aneurysm clipped. Uh, the situation, in, I, I have to confess that the situation in Europe is different than the situation in the US, and you know why, because, you know, uh, no surgeon in, in, in Europe don't treat uh, aneurysm anymore. You know, in my uh, own uh, hospital, you know, they treat ruptured MCA only when there is a urge hematoma because they evacuate the hematoma. And okay, we say you treat, you evacuate the hematoma, so you can also clip the aneurysm in the same time. But otherwise, you know, all ruptured aneurysm. We are. I, I was saying we are in the in the, the at the moment we are treating a ruptured MC aneurysm, very complex one. To be honest, we are placing a web in the aneurysm sac. You know, there is it's just a subarachnoid hemorrhage. There is no uh, uh, hematoma for for ruptured aneurysm. We always make. Uh, a decision with the neurosurgeon. By the way, the, the patient is hospitalized in the neurosurgery, and so they receive the patient, and we, we make a decision with the neurosurgeon. And here, you, you, you know, it's a com for us, it's complex, but they consider that the, the approach with web is uh, better than the approach with clip. But I agree, I, I think it's a question you, you are, uh, I think uh, most neurosurgeons I know from US, and you are part of them, by the way, are very skilled. You know, I discuss a lot with Adam Arthur, who is a neurosurgeon too, who is using both clip and web. And uh, I know that progressively is moving from clip to web. But when I discuss with him, and I do it recently, he still tell me that he is using a lot of uh, clip also for uh, some aneurysm. I don't know the percentage. I, I think now he's no longer 50-50. I think he's more 60-40 or maybe 70-30, according to what he said to me. Huh? Uh, but, uh, but he's not exclusively using web also. And he's also using uh, other, other techniques, endovascular techniques. But I think progressively, uh, you know, we move. But, I, I think your question is a good question, but you know, I think we are not dealing with a treatment, but we are dealing with a treatment done by an endovascular uh, neuroradiologist or endovascular neurosurgeon on with a treatment done by uh, a clipping done by a, a neurosurgeon. So maybe in US, you know, uh, endovascular uh, 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 neurosurgeon doing open surgery, uh, a, a, a better uh, results with a clip than with web, but it's not exactly the same situation in uh, in, uh, in France. You know, uh, the problem is a question of uh, number of patients you treat. You know, we I am treating okay with my team, uh, 150 aneurysm per 100 or 150 aneurysm per year between 100 and 150. On my neurosurgeon treat less than five aneurysm. So. Indeed, it's a big difference. But I know, I know the debate. Uh, I, I, but honestly, uh, singularly in France, it's singularly true in France, maybe a little bit less in UK and in Germany, according to what I discuss with my colleagues from these countries. But it seems that, you know, neurosurgery is declining progressively on, the, on more and more. So uh, web was partially replacing clipping in some indication, also in US, by the way. And uh, I think, okay, maybe sometimes clip is still an option when, when you have a very skilled uh, neurosurgeon. I think it's an important point. The, uh, the volume um, uh, of surgeries done in Europe is so low, it's going to be hard to compete in terms of quality and experience. Exactly. You know, 
we, I had this discussion also with the French Society of Neurosurgery. I think to me, the only option they have, but they don't do that, by the way, as of now, the only option is to concentrate the neurosurgical cases in a selected number of centers. But indeed, you can imagine that even if the system is different in France and US, even, even to make this is really difficult because who will accept not to treat aneurysm? It's difficult. So, but the, the number is a, is, a, is a key point, you know. As of now, my experience with web is roughly 250 cases. So you can imagine that uh, I, I, I don't say that I am not doing mistakes huh? and I have no complication. I, have, I will never say that because I still do mistakes and I still have complication. But, you know, I have a better understanding of what I am doing than in uh, five, 10 years ago with the web at the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Thank you once again. So, Professor, we have a few a few questions here from the fellows. Uh, yeah. yeah, first of all, regarding the adequate occlusion versus occlusion, you had a, a few patients that had a recurrence and were retreated in the in the trials, which were Raymond Raymond two before before retreatment. Yeah. Which means they were inside the adequate occlusion category. Yes, yes. You know, uh, I, I was not precisely analyzing these patients, you know. I think the problem of uh, Raymond 2, you know, maybe uh, I, so there were two patients effectively Raymond 2 retreated. Uh, okay, it's a, it's a own indication of the physician of the center, but I think, you know, uh, maybe there was a, an evolution of the neck remnant, uh, which was at the beginning, it was a complete occlusion. So after a neck remnant, I show you a lot of example where, you know, we have a, a stable neck remnant, which is probably a difference. I cannot demonstrate we have a neck remnant with a web. It is more stable than when we have a neck remnant with, uh, with coils. Uh, when, we, when we have a neck remnant with coils, we know, and uh, usually we, we, we have a very strong follow-up of, of patients treated with coils with a neck remnant because we know that there is a risk of a uh, relatively important risk of evolution in the direction of an aneurysm remnant. So, but it's not the case with web. I show you several cases where, where the neck remnant is stable uh, after five years. So, but probably they were retreating what was considered by the, by the Corla because don't forget that all what the number I gave you are coming from the Corla. So probably it was uh, analyzed as a neck remnant by the Corla. But you know, the, the center was considering that maybe there is an evolution, or maybe it was a, a intermediate be between neck remnant and aneurysm remnant, and they were considering that it has to be treated. And it comes a little bit to the limitation of this classification, you know, neck remnant and aneurysm remnant. You know, it's not always on, by the way, we know that it's not perfect. And because we know that it's not perfect, uh, you know, there were. Uh, uh, modified classification of Montreal that we have proposed that includes the size of the aneurysm at the beginning, the size of the remnant, blah, 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 because it's not the same. If, if you have a two millimeter remnant uh, for an aneurysm, 10 millimeter at the beginning, or 10, two millimeter remnant when the aneurysm was uh, three or four at the beginning. So, you know, this classification is a little bit simple. We have to use it because if we want to compare to other studies, Areta, uh, uh, whatever, yeah, is that blah, 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 blah. We need to use a relatively similar classification. But in the same time, we know that there is a partial overlap between neck remnant and aneurysm remnant. So probably the reason why two aneurysm qualified as neck, rem uh, neck remnant were still retreated. Okay, Professor, what is your experience with web for rupture aneurysms and how do you manage the, I mean, what is your workflow, pre-operative, post-operative? So we have an excellent uh, experience with web in rupture of aneurysm. You know, we were, I, I have to confess that uh, most, most rupture of aneurysm are still coiled in the department, treated with coils. Uh, for several reasons. One, one reason was that we were waiting for the results of Claris because it's important. Claris gives us a, certain, a very great uh, element regarding the fact that the web is effectively protecting against bleeding. So that's very important. Another point is that 
uh, most ruptured aneurysm in my department are treated by uh, my assistants. Uh, so, um, you know, at the beginning, I was the only guy doing uh, web cases. So now uh, most uh, most assistants are trained with uh, web, so they can treat uh, aneurysm with uh, web, ruptured aneurysm with web, and they are quite comfortable. You know, for them, it's when they can, when it's a good indication for web, they prefer to treat with web than with coils because it's less dangerous because you, you just put one device, so the risk is concentrated at the moment where you deploy the web, more or less, and when you catheterize the aneurysm, and, uh, and you have not to pull five, six, uh, ten points, I don't know. So it's, uh, the procedure is short, and you know, the procedure is safe, so they prefer to treat the aneurysm with web. So it's not always possible, sometimes it's complicated when we, you have daughter sac at the level of the neck, it's not easy to treat the aneurysm because you have to be sure that the web is covering the daughter sac. You are not always sure. It's always not so easy to do when you have a branch coming from the neck. So, uh, so sometimes they continue to treat the, the aneurysm when it's quite irregular. You know, when it's quite irregular, very irregular, or even multilobulated. Sometimes it's not possible to treat with web because you don't know where to place the web. So now when we treat with web, what we do, uh, we do exactly the same as for coiling, which means that we don't give any antiplatelet medication before the treatment. We give uh, heparin during the treatment, and after the treatment, we give aspirin 75 milligrams per uh, orally. I, I think that you don't have, uh, no, you have oral, oral form of uh, aspirin. You don't have the IV, uh, IV administration of uh, aspirin, yes. So we give aspirin after the treatment for four weeks, five weeks, and that's it. Okay. So, uh, Mohammed. Okay. So, uh, Professor, do, what is the experience in your center with clips after web? I know you're. I know you don't don't clip, but do you have many yeah. cases where clipped after web? We have treated uh, at least three, maybe four now. Uh, patients uh, initially treated with web with clip, and I can tell you that. Uh, uh, we publish it in uh, in Genes, by the way, uh, at least three patients. And uh, definitely is easier to treat an aneurysm treated with web than an aneurysm treated with coils. And because, you know, uh, with web, the, the, the web is fully, uh, you can depress completely, you can compress completely the web. So it means that you don't have to remove the web outside the aneurysm sac. On the contrary, with coils, you probably know it, if, if the neck, uh, if the, the, the place for the, the, the clip is small, sometimes you will have to, to, to remove the coils because when you place, even if there is an uh, aneurysm remnant, sometimes you, you place the, 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 the clip and you know, because of the mass, the, the mass of the coils, the clip go in the direction of the bifurcation. So can even uh, create a stenosis at the level of the bifurcation. So sometimes neurosurgeon, surgeon are obliged to remove the coils from the aneurysm sac. So really it's more easy to treat an, an aneurysm initially treated with web with a clip if needed than uh, an aneurysm treated with coils at the beginning. Okay, another question here from uh, one of the attendees. If you can deploy two webs simultaneously for a large aneurysm, that's the first Yes, question. it was done. It was done but by some, uh, but I am, I, I am a little bit reluctant. If it's a, a giant aneurysm, you know, it was proposed, and I, I have so, we have done some cases like this. It was proposed not uh, not uh, particularly at the beginning by Christophe Cognard, you know, to to seal the neck with a web and to place coil, coils at the level of the fundus. So it means that you place two mic in the aneurysm sac. Indeed, it's for large and giant aneurysm. So you, 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 you place a web at the level of the neck, and thereafter, with a second microcatheter you place from the beginning, you can deploy coil at the level of the fundus. We do that recently. I don't show you the case, but I can, if necessary. I can find the case. But uh, we do that for a ruptured ECOM. You know, it was a relatively large ECOM, but with a very wide neck. 
So the aneurysm was maybe 12 millimeter or 13 millimeter. I don't remember. So what it was not me doing the treatment, but one of my assistants. So what he was doing, it was placing two microcatheter in the aneurysm sac. It was a ruptured one. Huh? It was placing at the beginning at the level of the neck. And with the second catheter, it is an option sometimes. Place a multi lobulated aneurysm with two lobules. You can treat the both lobules with one web in each lobule. So we can do that. But if you have a giant aneurysm, I am not sure I will do it because I am not sure it will. You know, we, we have the experience now with a contour. I am not sure that we need really to fulfill the aneurysm sac with a web. I say that to microvention now. I say to microvention, please do, please prepare some shallow web, even for the big sizes. Because what we need to do is not to fulfill the aneurysm sac with a web. We don't need to go to the dome. We just need to seal the, to close the neck, and that's it. We do that with a, with a, with a contour. I have less experience with contour, indeed. But we were doing 10 cases, and I discussed recently with uh, Thomas Klebig, who was uh, conducting the study in uh, Germany, in Europe. Uh, and he was telling me that, OK, he has some recanalization with contour, but not so many. You know, OK, we are waiting for a, a prospective study with uh, contour to know what, what are exactly the, the one year results on uh, a longer term, uh, follow up term uh, results. But, uh, you, you see that in that case, we don't need to, we, we just cover the neck and that's it. So I am not sure that it's really, what, what is mandatory in my mind is to close properly the neck, which is not always easy to do. Yeah, and we work, we work obviously, you always will have the, in large aneurysms, the problem of mass effect. Yeah, not, exactly. Uh, another question so, from Chris. Uh, a few tips and tricks to deploy the web in hard angles that may flip in the wrong direction. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's, uh, we, you know, there was a limitation at the beginning, which was a 45 degree angle, which means that at the beginning, the recommendation of sequence was not to use a web in aneurysm with an axis more than 45 degree. With the web 17 is different because you can shape the microcatheter, and you can, even when you deploy the web, the web 17, uh, you know, you will still uh, keep partially the curves of the microcatheter. But I agree that sometimes it will be a true difficulty. In fact, the difficulty is when you have an aner a bifurcation aneurysm, which is not centered on the bifurcation, for example, a MC aneurysm, which is not exactly uh, in front of the M1, but in one of the bifurcation branch on which has an angulation. In that case, it's a nightmare because we you have two angles to cover and it's difficult. It was a case we were doing today. We had these two angles. The reason why it was difficult, but we were successful to place the web, by the way, but whatever. But that's, you're right, it's still a limitation we have, uh, but more and more we with the experience we gain, we can treat more and more complex aneurysm with complex angle uh, with the parent artery. Okay, Professor. L last question about the about the contour. Uh, recently, has been the the serous study has been published. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what's your opinion on that, and what was what's the future of this uh, device in your mind? You know. My opinion is that the concept is very good. Why is the concept is very good? Because you make something relatively simple, which is you close the neck. What we, what, what we do with the flow diverter, by the way, huh? but except that we don't have metal in the parent artery. So it, it's, the idea is very good. So now what we need, I know, I know the results of the study, which was published in Genis, by the way, but you know, you, you have seen probably that they have a very short uh, follow-up. That's the problem. I, I think they have, uh, I don't remember the, the exact numbers, but you know, they have limited follow-up at six months and they have uh, more limited follow-up at one year. So we need long-term follow-up. And when I say long-term follow-up, just not only one year, but probably two years, three years. So 
I think the concept is good singularly because the selection of uh, contour is easier compared to the selection of web in terms of sizing. And they say that uh, series endovascular says that uh, very, uh, very often. But in the same time, we need to know if the efficacy is uh, very is good. You know, at the beginning, I was thinking, yes, the ID is good, but we have a high risk of migration is in the aneurysm side. It seems not to be the case. Huh? You know, I discussed with uh, Thomas Liebig, who was a PI from the further study. I discussed with UK colleagues who we are using uh, also a lot of contour, and they say that they have stable uh, anatomical results. But we need a study for that. Okay. Okay, Professor, thank you very much. It was a really fruitful encounter, and thanks for joining us again. I hope you can join us again in the future also. Yeah, my pleasure. And it was very good. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.